Today we're playing Catan Seafarer's Expansion Scenario 7 The Pirate Islands. Okay, so the, and in this scenario, there's a couple things to point out before we even make the board, and that is the five victory points that are in the development cards, they are removed from the game. So take them out of the deck. This scenario also does not use the longest road or the largest army. So they are removed from the game as well. The harbors, your five two to one ports, plus three three to one harbors. You will also need three markers. So I'm not sure which expansion this one came with. The kids seem to think it came with cities and knights, um, but we, any kind of marker will do, um, and you'll see how those are set up on the board once we set them up. All right, so we're gonna set up the board, and we'll explain more once we have it set up. finish setting up the board. So this is the base. This is what it looks like. So these three tokens here are going to be placed so the blue token is going to be for the blue player. The yellow token is going to be for the orange player. And the white token is going to be used for the red player. So, blue, red, orange. It's at those locations and only those locations that those players may build a settlement out on the small islands. The next thing you do is take stacks of three and place them here for orange, here for blue, and here for red. Each player then takes a settlement and places it on their stack. So I am blue, so I'm going to place this settlement on my stack. These settlements, as of right now, do not count as a victory point. You must get rid of you must get rid of those chits underneath in order for it to count. Next, each player will place a settlement and a ship in the following spots. Blue goes here, red goes here, the boat goes here, and orange goes here. We each will get to build two more settlements anywhere else on the main island, but these are the starting spots. The goal of the game is to build a shipping route straight to your settlement with the Catan chips. Once you get to that location, 
you may build a settlement, but you don't have to. Then you'll keep going. When you're building, the number one rule with the ships is you must go in a straight line out to that settlement. You cannot veer off and go block the other people. You can't be doing stuff. You can't do that. You must just make one straight line, which is why there is no longest road in this game. Now, to defeat pirates when you get to those Catan ships out on the small islands, you must have warships. So, a warship is also known as a knight. There are no knights in this game. If you purchase a development card and it's a knight, you get to turn one of your ships into a warship. And you do that starting with the one closest to your settlement and you lay it down. That's a warship. So let's say I have three warships. I'm almost at that settlement. So I'm going to finish. When you place that last ship, you will attack the pirates. The pirates own that settlement as of right now. So what you'll do is you will roll for the pirates five. So pirates have a strength of five. I have three warships. That means I lose. I'd lose two boats, two ships. Let's say I had rolled a two. The pirate strength is two. I have three warships, therefore I win and I will remove one Catan chit from the settlement. I will have to do that three times until that settlement is sitting on the board. Once that settlement is sitting on the board, it now counts as a victory point, and that's how you win the game. To win the game, you must own that settlement, so get rid of all those chits underneath, plus you must have 10 victory points. So those are the two criteria. I'll get somebody to put this back underneath the settlement. Another aspect of this game is the pirate ship. So if we roll sevens, there's no robber in this game. There's also no real pirate ship. What happens when you roll a seven is you still discard up to half of your hand and you get to steal a resource from any player. The pirate ship, every time the dice are rolled, you take the lowest number, if it's a tie, doesn't matter, and you move the pirate ship that many spots. So in this case, we would move him one. When the next player rolled, again, he would move one. If the pirate ship happens to land on a water hex where you have a settlement, a battle takes place. The pirate ship has a strength because I just rolled a one, the pirate has a strength of one. I'm going to, here, you want to move him here so it makes more sense. The pirate has a strength of one. I have a strength of three warships, so I win. If I win that battle, I get to choose one resource from the bank. Let's say the pirate rolled a six. 
I would lose. Therefore, I would lose one resource card plus a resource card for every city I own. So if I have three cities on the board, I would lose four resources. So cities in this scenario kind of count against you if the pirates defeat you. Development cards are important because you need the warships, aka the knight cards. Let's stick this back in the middle. The only extra victory points come from Harbor Master, and that's only if you have the Traders and Barbarians expansion, which we do. So again, how you win this scenario is by taking over that settlement, so make sure, making sure all the Catan ships are gone from underneath it and it is played, it's based on the board, plus having 10 victory points. Also, just a reminder, your settlements that are out on top of the Catan chits, you do not collect for those yet. So for blue, if a 10 was rolled, I do not collect a brick. Once I have defeated the pirates three times and those three Catan chits are gone, then I can start collecting. I think I've covered everything. If I haven't, we'll stop the game and we'll explain as well. pause and just walk you through because this is the more complicated area uh, of this game. So dad just built his last ship so now he is touching the settlement. He rolled two threes. So that means the pirates have a strength of three. Dad has only two warships. 
so dad loses. Therefore, he removes two boats. So now he will have to rebuild those ships, and when he gets... But he can only attack once per turn. So it would not be smart. There'd be no point in building two ships here uh, to end this turn because he can't fight the pirates again anyway. Only once per turn is that allowed to happen. just built a ship to touch the pirate owned settlement and a two was rolled so the pirate strength is two I have six warships so that means I defeat some of the pirates so the Catan chick comes off there are now two more under my settlement the Catan chick goes into the collection. It is not a victory point. And so now I have to basically do that two more times so that I can own that settlement. Now, once I own that settlement, it doesn't mean I win. If you take a look on the main island, one, two, three, four, that would be five points. I'm not, I'm not even close to ten. So I'm going to have to keep working on my settlements over here. But I've put a lot of energy and cards into um, warships so that I can't necessarily lose when I'm fighting the pirates. So that was my strategy. Um, now I just need to focus on getting more victory points on the main island. games today and this is the second one I won and I'm so excited because I never win. 
and I'm so excited. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Plus, I own the settlement out there because there's no Catan shits underneath. So this is the Pirate Islands. Um, not my favorite scenario, but I know Dad likes it. The kids kind of mm -hmm. lose interest. Um, it's, if I have to say, it's probably the heaviest of the scenarios when it kind of when it comes to the complexity. I mean, it's not heavy by any means when it comes in comparison to other games, but in the seafarers and the Catan world, I'd say it's probably one of the heavier scenarios. Um, and that's it. So keep playing and have fun.